Big golden stonefly patterns are a staple in my box throughout the year. Winter and fall seem to be the best seasons for catching trout on big golden stonefly nymphs, but springtime high water situations and deep holding areas during the hot summer months are also times when this fly can be very effective. I start out with a Daiichi 1530, heavy wet fly hook in a size 8. I pinch the bar before adding a 532nd nickel tungsten bead for weight and a little bit of shine. Rest the bead in the palm of your hand with the small hole facing up and thread the hook point through it. Then you can push that bead around the bend and onto the shank of the hook. Move the bead to the back end of the hook before starting your thread just behind the eye. We're gonna use biots for the antennae, tails, and legs. Brown biots are gonna make up the tail and antennae, so I'll snip two of those for the front. Attach them to the hook so that the natural curvature of the biot goes outward. One at a time, grab the biot with a rapid thread and move it into position. Secure it with another tight wrap before adding the second biot. If you need to stop and make adjustments, that's okay. Just make sure it looks the way you want it to. Wrap down all the butt ends and add a few half inches and trim your thread. Then you can bring your bead all the way back to the front of your hook where it will cover the tie in point just behind the eye. Start your thread again behind the bead and bring it all the way back to where the old barb once was, just off the back side of the bend of the hook. Here we're going to repeat the same process with the brown biats for the tail. Hold each biot individually in position and tie them in. Make sure each is set in place before adding secure wraps, and then you can half hitch at the back and bring your thread under and in between each biot to help keep them separated. Some tires also like to use a small ball of dubbing that can be placed at the tie-in point before the biots are tied on to splay them out. Now after the tail is to your liking, our first on last off material is soft copper wire in a gold color. Tie it down along the shank of the hook, ending with your thread and the wire on the opposite side of the hook shank. Then reach for a material called thin skin. This is a mottled golden stone color pattern. Trim a strip about three quarters or a half the size of the hook gape and peel the thin plastic material from its backing. Then cut a little triangle taper into one end that's going to be tied down on the hook. Tie in your thin skin with the dull side facing up and wrap your thread all the way back to the original tie-in point for the tail, checking the entire time to make sure there won't be any visible thread wraps once the thin skin is pulled over the front. For the bright yellow belly of a golden stone, lemon yellow Firestar works perfect. Tap your tongue with your dubbing finger and get it nice and tacky before spinning a small noodle onto your thread. Wrap it about halfway up the hook before pulling your thin skin over the top. Now be sure to capture this thin skin with a loose wrap of thread. You just want to make sure that it lays back properly and doesn't get all bunched up on the hook. Then, once you capture it, you can add a few more securing wraps. Bring your wire rib forward with even spiral wraps and tie it down at the back side of the thorax. Helicopter or trim away any excess wire you might have. We're going to tie in the legs and thorax together in a multi-step process. Start with a few yellow biots for legs. Using the natural curvature again of the biot, tie them down so that they angle towards the bottom of the fly and outward. Tie them together or individually, whatever works best for you. Once in their proper spot, trim and secure the butt ends. Then, we're going to start a dubbing loop to create the thorax. Pull out about 10 inches of thread from your bobbin and double it over one of the fingers from your off hand, coming back up to make a few wraps around the hook shank. Go around this dubbing loop two or three times with your thread before making a few more wraps around the hook to lock it into place. With your finger still holding the dubbing loop open, add some wax before reaching for Salmo Supreme Pheasant Crest Dubbing. 
slide two or three small clumps of dubbing in between the loop and spread it out from top to bottom. With your favorite loop tool, or in this case, some modified plunger style hackle pliers, hook onto the bottom of the loop and give your dubbing a spin. It's pretty satisfying watching it spin into a buggy loop right before your eyes. Keep spinning until the dubbing is secure and won't slide when you run your fingers over the top of it. Our first wrap with this new dubbing loop is going to be right behind our set of legs, just to cover any exposed thread wraps from that body transition, and also to help splay those legs out a bit. Go ahead and fold those legs back again before adding a few wraps in front. Of course, my great camera angle is going to really help you see this play out. Let's just fix that real quick. There we go. Tie down your dubbing loop so that you can create the first wing case for this stone fly. Instead of just pulling your thin skin straight forward, we want to pull it up and then fold it back over itself to make a small fold or bump in the back. Secure the thin skin like before and pull the excess back again so you're able to add some wraps in front of it. Grab two more yellow biots for one more set of legs. Secure them at the front of the hook, just behind the bead, making sure the tips extend about the same length of the first biot legs. With the remaining dubbing loop material, come behind and under the final set of legs and all the way up to behind the bead. Secure the loop with thread and trim the excess. Finally, we're gonna pull the remaining thin skin again, folding it back over itself to make the second wing case. Compress the top of it and pinch the sides before adding a loose wrap of thread to secure it. Add a few tight wraps to secure the thin skin in place and then a few wraps in front of it before pulling the thin skin straight up, trimming off the excess. If necessary, add a final noodle of pheasant crest dubbing to cover the exposed thread before you whip finish and trim your thread. I like to clean up my thorax just a little bit, but you can leave it as buggy as you'd like. The heavy golden stonefly catches trout anywhere golden stoneflies are found and should be a staple for any season. Make sure you have them tied up in various sizes to match the stonefly nymphs in your home waters. Ask your local fly shop to stock up on all the larva lace products needed to tie them up during your next vice session. If you're ready to restock your shelves, call Lori or go to Hagensfish.com to get the process started. Next time you're surfing the web, download the Hagens catalog. It's all good, but be sure to scroll through the fly tying selection. When you need some inspiration, check out Fly Tying University on Facebook. Whether you're a new tire full of questions or a veteran with words of wisdom to pass on, Fly Tying University is a growing community for all fly tires. Check it out. Larva Lace is a proud partner of the Fish Stories Archive. Record a great angler today and keep their voice around forever at fishstories.org. Thanks for being a part of the Larva Lace family. Tight lines, everyone. Time to go catch some fish.